Hello and welcome to Shelby DIY, a show where we teach you how to do it yourself. I'm your host, Katie Shimatero, and in today's episode, we're here with the owner of Fabulous Finishes, Patty Henning. She's going to show us how to revamp a mirror. The paints and the materials we're using today are all very versatile and can be used on many household products. So let's roll up our sleeves, step into the studio, and find our inner artist for this week's DIY. I'm Patty at Fabulous Finishes and today we're going to work on a mirror and we're going to show a quick and easy paint project to revamp it using um, a product called Reclaim Paint. Typically the people that come into the store use Reclaim for their kitchen cabinet projects or bigger projects or if they don't want to get real cre uh, creative or um, artsy with a lot of color. They just want something very quick and simple and easy. Um, this paint is just uh, all in one. It not only adheres and, and bonds to all surfaces without sanding and stripping, but it also has a sealer built in. So typically this is kind of the application that we see where it's a solid application. Um, but we like to play with all these products at the studio here and see other ways we can use them. So today we are going to do this mirror where we're going to show you how with just like uh, maybe a tablespoon of paint, if that, of that same paint, and about 10 minutes of our time, we can get this mirror painted out and um, we can do something pretty cool with it. So I'm gonna start with the off-white reclaim, um, which is kind of like a parchment color. And I'm just gonna take a blob of paint out of there. And well, before I start painting, you want to make sure that your surface is really good and clean. I'm using, uh, you can use anything like deep green, simple green, um, spick and span even. You just want to make sure that your surface is grease and wax free. That's critical, otherwise you don't get a good bond from the paint. So you would go into all your cracks and crevices. We've already kind of pre-wiped this, so. We'll just get a little bit extra here. I'm not going to worry about getting that white off because I'm just going to paint over it. So I don't really care about that. But you'd want to clean your whole surface and then let it dry. And then you could start your, your paint application. OK. So we have the paint. And I have a couple various chip brushes. These brushes are cheap little brushes that are our favorites here at the studio. Um, if I grab, you know, if you see like various stages of how beat up and old these are, the older they get actually, the better we like them. Um, but when they're brand new, you want to just, you kind of want to break the brush in where we get it we get some water on it, some soap, and we really kind of smash it and pull all those loose hairs out because they do shed when they're new. Um, but once they, once you start using them, they're, they're awesome little brushes for paint application. So I'm just going to use this little guy because I'm going to start with the detail. I'm going to get some of the paint on my brush. And you just kind of start brushing it on. Now I'm not painting it heavy, so if you see like this would be where somebody would typically want to paint heavy. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to push it further so you can see how I'm kind of scrubbing it on. And one brush stroke can really go pretty far, which is what I want. I don't want to have to paint it on real heavy. Now to get into areas like this here with this cool little brush, I just do a cool little bouncing. I call it stippling and it kind of just jams it. And again, I don't have much on my brush. If I had too much on my brush, this wouldn't work. I would just leave it like real sloppy and it would just kind of leave too much paint. So if you get too much paint on there, you can just take a soft cloth and wipe it back. So I want to make sure my whole surface is covered. So you want to get the, the paint out of those little ridges right here and just kind of work it with that same brush. And again, I'm not going back and taking any more paint. 
Anywhere I see a little bit of a lighter brown, I'm just going to kind of bounce and feather over it like that. And you have, this paint stays open for a little bit. It's not like it dries instantly. Like up here, I'm still moving it. So the one thing you just don't want to do, you want to avoid letting something kind of be like where you leave like weird marks or a movement in the paint and then go all the way over here and then say, oh, I should have fixed this, okay? So I'm just going to lightly make sure that everywhere I went, I'm just pulling my brush or bouncing. It's kind of like a two-part and then I move on to the next area. Okay. So now I'll go on this side here. And I took a little bit more paint, so now I'm gonna, it's almost like you're dry brushing the paint on. But see already, it's got a pretty cool application where it's not as solid as the cupboard door, but it's a pretty finish. So and that's what we're going for. It's a different way you can use this paint. Okay, so now I'll turn it. And we'll see how fast we can get this covered. Okay. And again, if I get too much paint on there, then I can just take a, just a dry cloth Kind of wipe it back a little. Get it into those little cracks. And these are easy where you just have to really kind of jam it into all those little cracks and crevices. It's almost like a scrubbing. And if you wanted to leave some of that brown coming through in there, you could. I'm just choosing to kind of cover everything and we're going to put a glaze on this when it dries. So, so I'm going to cover it all, but you don't have to. You could, you could cover as much or as little as you want. That's up to you. That's the beauty of the paint. And there's really no way you can do anything wrong with this paint. You know, if you put it all on and it was starting to dry and you hated it, you could, you know, take a hot soapy rag and wipe it off. So it's not like it, the old-fashioned oil-based paints where once you start to get them on, they're hard to remove them. So same thing here. I really get my arm going on there. This paint, if you're going to use it on larger applications where you were going to put it on more even, um, it's best to use a roller, not a brush, because the paint has a cool ability to kind of shrink back. So if you apply it with a roller, you don't see um, your application marks, whereas if you brushed it on, you're going to see some of your brush marks. And people don't like to see that. So they recommend that you use a, a low nap roller. I don't ever use foam rollers with this paint because it leaves like a little bit of a bubbling, which doesn't look nice. I'm painting off, got too much on it. Okay, so. And if you see areas as you come back, if it's a little bit lighter or a little bit darker, you can just kind of go back. If I wanted to add more right here, I could, but I'm just going to kind of keep on going. So here we're at so far. I got this. Now I'm only going to do one coat on this. That's all it needs. And then it's going to dry. And typically with this paint, 
because it has a sealer built in it, um, you have to follow certain rules. One would be that it really doesn't like to be wet for the first couple days, like you would avoid getting it wet or wiping it with a damp rag. Um, that would even mean like applying a, a water-based glaze to it. So if somebody does a piece of furniture or they do their kitchen cupboards and they want to do a glaze, um, we usually tell them to wait about four days after their paint's on before they glaze it. Um, but again, this is going to be a different kind of application. We're applying this paint so thin that once it dries, we're going to go right on with the glaze and we'll show you how that works. Now, if you had to leave your project for some reason, oops, um, like if I had the, the doorbell rang or I had to go answer my phone, I don't want to stop in the middle of a section. So if I was in the middle of doing this, I would not answer my door or I would wait and call back whoever was calling me. Because a lot of times if you leave something and it starts to set up and dry a little bit, it's really hard to kind of come back in and get that uh, going where it looks like it was all done at the same time and you don't want to have like weird little marks where something was started and then it has like a weird little dark shadow area over here. So that's about how I would leave that so it all pulls together real nice. And then we're going to leave the bottom undone so you can see the before and after. And all I have is this little side right here left to do. Good with that. Yeah. Okay, I think I got everything. Okay. Okay, so we're going to leave it right here. I think I have all my spots. Kind of look around, make sure you don't have any spots. This mirror has a lot of detail. I just want to make sure everything's covered. Get into those little cracks and crevices. Okay. And if you had areas like your little detailed areas here, if you wanted to have a little bit darker of a paint, you can do that. Like if I want to go like this, I can before we dry it. Like maybe these guys. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to take a short break here while we just put this guy under the dryer. Now, normally you would just let him air dry probably take about, oh, I'd wait about an hour. It's not going to take that long to dry, but um, if I was going to move on to glazing, I'd let it set at home for about an hour, and then you could move on to the next step. So we'll be back once this is dry. a and Recycling Center is Michigan's premier parts recycling center that saves you money while protecting the environment. We pay top dollar for late model junk cars, SUVs, and trucks. All types, all models, both foreign and domestic. Search our online inventory to find used and refurbished parts. Need quick cash? Don't throw away your junk because your scrap metal is worth money. Selling has never been easier with our easy drive-on, drive-off scale. Visit ANA Recycling Center today. My name is Cheryl Steinhurst. My husband and I are owners of Steinies Tavern. 
We're located on the northwest corner of 25 Mile and Shelby Road. We offer a unique dining experience from our restaurant to our off-site catering. Everything we make is from scratch. We utilize Michigan-made products whenever possible. We're open seven days a week. We offer daily lunch and dinner specials, and we carry the most craft beers on draft in all of Macomb County. So plan on coming out to Steiny's Tavern, where you come for the food and stay for the party. Okay, we're back. This is a dry surface now. And what we're going to do is we're going to brush on a glaze, which will give, um, give kind of an antiqued finish to the color. So we're going something where this is the solid paint. If we would have applied it real solid, see the difference, how it's a lighter, sheer coating. And then I want to brown it up so that it kind of fits into our festive theme for fall and harvest and all that good stuff. So I'm going to use um, same company, Caramel Colors. They've got um, some really easy to use. They actually call them wall glazes because they're um, made to uh, be easy enough for homeowners to use like on their walls or if you wanted to do a simple glaze finish. We use them a lot for furniture and, and accessories like this. Um, and there's two different colors that I like to use. One is called coffee and one is tea. And you can kind of see the different colors here. And I'm just gonna put a squirt of each on my plate here. Uh, and the only reason I'm doing this is partly because I like both the colors together. Um, and partly because I, I use combinations a lot and a lot of times people aren't real familiar with how I'm doing that. I think you, somebody thinks maybe you apply the first color and then you apply the second color over it and really this way you can just see that I put them both on the plate at the same time and I take my same brush and I just grab both of them. So sometimes I might grab just the coffee, sometimes I might grab just the tea and then I just start to apply it onto my surface. So what I'm doing here is kind of like with the paint, it's more of a wetting application. The glaze is all water-based and I'm only going to work a little section at a time and I'm going to have a little dry cloth here that I'm just going to softly wipe back that glaze as I apply it. And the Reclaim, if you remember um, when I said earlier that typically this is a paint that you would wait a few days before you apply it because this paint does um, need to set and it kind of cures a little bit, hardens up so that you're not going to gum up and pull your paint. But here because we're using it in such a thin application, I'm just lightly brushing the glaze on and then I'm softening it back. And the cool thing is, like with some of the other paints we use here, when we want to get a reveal or where we want to um, get like a di distressing going. Um, we'll usually take sandpaper and we'll sand our edges to kind of reveal back. Or with the chalk paints, we can take a damp rag. But with this paint, because it is fresh and we're glazing it sooner than we should, what we can do is we can just kind of wipe our edges with a dry cloth and I can get it without having to use any sandpaper, which is kind of fun. So if you want to do any of that, you can do that, you know, go back around with your rag. You don't have to use a sandpaper. It doesn't make a mess, which I thought was kind of fun. Okay, so I'll keep covering my guy here. Now, if you want to leave more glaze, um, you know, it, it depends on your taste. We get people in the workshops when they apply a glaze. Some people really like to put it on and just leave it heavier. Um, other people just barely want a hint of that color. So it, it, it's up to you. There's no right or wrong way. It's just, I, I guess, if anything, I would say make sure you cover all of your surface because you can kind of tell if part of it hasn't been. That would be the only rule, if you would call it that. Okay, and then I move on. And then in this kind of detail, it just sits. You just kind of jam it into those little cracks and detailed areas and it'll it'll stay in there unless you work to get it out but I usually like to just leave it right where it's at. Okay. And there. Now once this glaze is on here you are going to need to let this sit and dry. Um, a glaze will wet your 
your surface and it takes a while to dry. To the touch you'll think it's, it's dry but it, it's still not. Um, it really gets into the, the paint and it takes a while to fully harden so you just have to be a little careful with it. Like I wouldn't put anything on the ledge for um, probably at least a day or two if I was to do it the right way. Okay, so I'll jam it here. And if you had two people uh, that were going to work on the same piece, a lot of times what we like to do is just have one person applying and the other person going right behind them and wiping it back. Like we'll get that even with cabinets if people are glazing bigger surfaces or like the under part of a, um, an island bar and it's got quite a big run. Um, we'll just suggest that maybe somebody has their partner um, do the brushing on and then they go behind it doing the wiping off because um, we all kind of have a different hand and you can tell like the difference if somebody's working one section and you're working another. Okay, so I can do that with my detail if I want some of that. Or I can just rub it hard, see how it'll really wear back. And the nice thing about this little project today is, you know, this mirror is plastic. You know, I got it from, I actually got it from a customer. She got it from a estate sale. And, you know, you pay a couple bucks for something and, you know, you might not have a real use for it, but then you're going to be hosting the holidays or let's say you're going to have um, something for, you know, you're going to have people over for a Halloween party or something. You know, you could take something like this and, you know, maybe that plastic color before didn't really go with your decor, but you can change it up and make it kind of harvesty like we're doing here and put some props on it and attach a cool, you know, festive bow and even, you know, stencil a couple words on the mirror, which we're going to do. And then, you know, you call it a day and when people go home, you know, you don't even have to pack it away and store it. You could just keep it and, you know, next holiday if you're hosting Christmas, you could pull it back out and do the same thing. And you, know, you could paint it black, you could paint it red, you could paint it whatever color you wanted. So it just gives you a lot of options. Okay, so the glazing is done now. Like I said, this is quite wet and it's a gummy um, finish right now as well. But um, we're just going to let this air dry and we're going to still show um, how we can take this mirror to one last decorative detail by adding a, a little festive greeting on it. We'll get the front area cleaned up here. And on mirrors, I do a lot of stenciling on mirrors. Um, it can be quite decorative and they're really, it, it makes a really um, neat accessory when you're done. Um, there's a couple different paints I will use. This Reclaim paint actually is one that works really well on glass because it has the sealer built in. So once it cures, you can clean your glass finish. Um, what we're going to do today, though, is we're going to use our American Paint 
chalk paint. Um, this paint has a lot of great colors and the, the neat feature about this paint is um, until you put a sealer or like a top coat on it, um, you can get it off with a wet rag and a little bit of oomph. So for it being a seasonal mirror that we're kind of going for the theme, we're going to use this waistcoat color, which is one of my favorites, and a little stencil brush. And I'll put this on um, the mirror, and then we can just leave it like this for, let's say, a couple weeks. Now, I'm not going to clean around it, but then when uh, my party's over, I can just take a, a wet rag and wipe that greeting right off, and then I can wait until Christmas, and I could use something else, maybe put ornaments on it or whatever. Um, so I'm going to have my stencil positioned right there, and I am going to use, um, if I put like just a little edger tool next to it so I don't kind of bounce over it. And I don't have much on my brush, okay, so I'm going to bounce most of it off, and then I'm just going to do a banging, like a straight up and down pouncing. And the key with the stenciling, because you don't want to have to be razor blading any any excess off on a mirror is you don't need much. Your brush really needs to be almost dry. If you have too much, it's going to squish through. And then just hold it in place. Work your way down. And if you wanted this to stay put and you were using the chalk paint to stencil, um, what we have done is we'll use a wax to put a little sealer over it because if the wax gets on the glass, it'll actually um, clean off, kind of buffs off. Otherwise, we use uh, those thicker paints from the first episode where we did the pumpkin on the glass and the spider. Oop, moved it a little bit. That's okay. Okay. And then when I get it done, I'm just going to lift it right up. Okay. And that'll stay there until we wipe it off. Um, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off the mirror, get all the paper off of it, and then we'll take it out and we'll see Katie stage it with all the cool harvesty stuff around it. And uh, that's the show today. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you later. And there you have it, another beautiful finished product by Patty Henning. All the paint used in today's episode can be purchased here at Fabulous Finishes, located on Van Dyke in between 23 and 24 Mile. That's all the time we have for today's episode. I'm your host, Katie Shimatero, and remember, don't throw away today what you can repurpose tomorrow.